We had seen it in the uh, Ebony Magazine, I believe, and a few more places. And when, the, uh, when I personally was here in 81, I didn't get a chance to stop to see the place. And uh, this is a good chance to see uh, a little small piece of Africa or the mother country. And also there are other reasons, there's spiritual reasons for coming here. Uh, I would imagine it to be quite like a pilgrimage in this uh, North American continent. Okay. Um, was about polygamy or men with four wives. Oyetunji has made a number of appearances in books and magazines. It's been, um, it was featured in the movie Roots. Um, it has been on the Oprah Winfrey show. It has been on the show To Tell the Truth. It's appeared in Sepia Magazine, Jet Magazine, uh, um, the, uh, the ABC TV program by Harry Reasoner um, in 1974 appeared. Um, the film Lord Chongle in 1974. The, the Yoruba Temple Drummers and Dancers appeared in the uh, movie Roots. The Zines. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Meg Benson and I welcome you to this week's edition of Close Up. Today we return to a village seen not very long ago here on Channel 2. Several weeks ago, Bill Brown of our PM Magazine staff went into the forests of South Carolina, halfway between Charleston and Savannah, for a close look at America's only authentic African village. His story about the village, its king, his followers, and the way of life there created such an interest that the phones here practically rang off the walls. So we're going back there today for more answers. Back to Oyotunji, the Yoruba African village. Ever since the hit TV miniseries Roots, black Americans have been rediscovering the strength and beauty of their African ancestry. Fashions have reflected this, as well as changes in language and education. Some people have even gone to Africa to better absorb the culture while a few enterprising souls have chosen to bring Africa to them. Rise in their ancient African foundation. But while they stick close to their ancient African culture, they don't fight the progress of the 20th century. Despite its primitive appearance, the village has electricity and telephones. Inhabitants pay rent and tax. They make their own living. Some sell wood carvings or handcrafted rings. Others work and is the provider for them all. King Osejiman Idai Fumi says the lives of Afro-Americans should be patterned more like the lives of their ancient predecessors, like the lives of the people here at the Oyotunji village. In Sheldon, South Carolina, Clay Johnson, News 4, Nightcast. You might think princesses don't live here in America. Wrong. You might think African villages can be found only in Africa. Wrong again. This story is about two princesses who live in an African village in the state of South Carolina. It is a new village, but in some ways it is also a village from long ago. Perhaps that's why they named it Oyatunji, which in the African language Yoruba means rises again. Here now is the story. Welcome to Oyotunji African Village in Sheldon, South Carolina. Hello, I'm Bill Curtis. On this program, we follow an American voodoo chief on a spiritual journey to Benin, Africa, where both as a witness and a participant, he reveals to us the secrets of ancient voodoo rituals. These sacred African ceremonies of purification, animal sacrifice, and spirit possession are rarely seen by the uninitiated. For believers, they reveal the mysteries of life and death. But to the Western world, they may always remain misunderstood and unexplained. In a remote village nestled in the swamps of South Carolina, about 65 miles south of Charleston. It's called Oyotunji. It was built by voodoo practitioners in the 1970s as a community where African Americans could go to rediscover their roots.
Choke has always been produced in Nigeria from time immemorial. And uh, you'll also notice that uh, most of us here wear beads. Uh, the word for beads or sacred beads or holy beads in the Yoruba language is ileti.